So I want to try something new for a video. So after thinking about it for a while, I thought of making a short bio for important church leaders that I admire. And the first one that came to my mind to make a video about is Elder D. Todd Christofferson. I feel that it's a little blasphemous to say you have a favorite apostle, unless you're John, who literally gives himself the title of John the Beloved and the disciple whom Jesus loved. But I really love Elder Christofferson, so I hope you enjoy this short look at his life. On January 24, 1945, David Todd Christofferson was born in American Fork, Utah, but was raised in Pleasant Grove and Linden, Utah. Even from a young age, it was pretty obvious that he was going to be a spiritual giant. When he was around the age of 12 years old, he asked his parents for a Bible for Christmas, which his parents were more than happy to give him. He has since said that he still has the Bible and that it is a treasured possession. This was the first red flag that he was going to be an apostle one day. Around the same age, his mother underwent surgery as part of her cancer treatment. Elder Christofferson helped around the house while she was recovering, and maybe even more heartwarming, he asked his grandmother on how to bake bread, since that was his mother's favorite. So he baked it for her during this time, since she couldn't. When he was around 15 years old, his father who was a veterinarian got a job in New Brunswick, New Jersey, which was a huge change from his hometown of Linden, Utah. Around this time, Elder Christofferson participated in the Hill Camorra pageant and was encouraged by his bishop at the time to get a testimony of the gospel. So he decided to go to the Sacred Grove to ask God about the gospel. And this is what he said about the experience. I prayed for a long time to receive a confirming witness of what Joseph Smith experienced there. I received no answer. But a few weeks later, when I was at my home in New Jersey reading the Book of Mormon, the answer came with a great power through the Holy Ghost. He then graduated high school in New Jersey and decided to serve a mission. He was sent to serve in the Argentina North Mission, and his mission president was future-to-be apostle Elder Richard G. Scott, who said of him that he was an exceptionally outstanding missionary whose devotion and capacities were evidence he would have a life of unusual significance, which is the second red flag that he was going to be an apostle one day. Side note, I actually served in one of the areas that Christofferson served as a missionary all those years ago. I actually met members that remember Elder Christofferson as a missionary and even showed me pictures of him when he was there, which is super cool. Once he finished his mission, he went to BYU for school and towards the end of his first semester, he saw a pretty girl on campus. He didn't actually meet her, but he made a point of remembering her face so that he could look her up in the college yearbook, which was published a few months later. He found out her name and set up a date through a mutual friend. You have to give him credit for being so patient. Nowadays, most of us would have just swiped left. On May 28, 1968, they got married in the Salt Lake Temple. In 1972, he continued schooling at Duke University where he studied law. After graduating, he was hired as a law clerk to John J. Sirica, who was the federal judge who presided over the Watergate trials. Yes, as in those Watergate trials. Together, they were the first people outside of the White House to listen to the infamous Richard Nixon White House tapes. Elder Christofferson said of the experience, Judge Sirica and I were shocked as we heard Nixon calmly ask how much money it would take to keep the Watergate burglars quiet. And the rest, as they say it, is history. 1993, he was called to the first quorum of the 70, and in 1998, as a member of the presidency of the 70. Elder Christofferson was responsible over the supervision of different areas in the church, including serving as the executive director of the Family and Church History Department. In this position, he was involved in negotiations with Jewish leaders on policies on temple work for Holocaust victims. On April 5, 2008, he was called as a member of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. When he received his calling as an apostle from President Thomas S. Monson, he initially said that it seemed impossible. And this was the third and final red flag of him becoming an apostle. I've had the opportunity of meeting Elder Christofferson twice, and he is someone I look up to, and I have gained a testimony of him being a true disciple of Jesus Christ. I hope that you learned something new about him in this video. Do you have a favorite quote or talk from him? Leave a comment below, and remember to subscribe to keep watching more videos. Talk to you later.